All right, guys, I needed to give myself a break, so I decided to pull out these bow ties and uh, do a first cut on them. In order to do that, I had to go over the guides, and I had to put a valve job on it first. Uh, the original valve job was very wide and unacceptable, you know, now to me. It was fine when I was uh, in the early 90s doing these, and I made the exhaust seat very wide so it would last longer. I remember my thinking at the time. Uh, interesting stuff. And in reality, why were my seats wearing out? Guide clearance. And floating valve train and all kinds of other stupid things you do when you're a kid. So, we'll take a quick look at it with the valves in. Notice we got blue on a good part of that chamber. And we got a great splatter pattern across that plug all the way to the exhaust. Let's take a look at the, cha at the cylinder. Okay, you can see spread both ways that way. You got a little bit of a chunk there. And you've got splatter, splatter, splatter around. Okay, we are n much noticeably better on the valve itself now. Way wider pattern. In the bowl, way wider pattern. Way wider. And the, the reason that is, is I had to change the height of the roof a little bit due to the air speeds on the roof. So it obviously liked that. Now, did it get us any flow changes? I'll have to say. Notice we got a nice angle on that, right? A nice angle on that on that Dyco. I really like the way that looks. Now I didn't go insane on this. I did some work. I did the guides, the valve job, the bowl just got touched in order to match it up to the newer valve job. Uh, notice I didn't even. I had to. Uh, I had to machine that down a little bit so I don't have to, uh, if that's not straight, it'll tweak your, your pilot, and it'll, it'll skew your whole valve job. So you got to machine that relatively flat, as flat as you can. So I had to touch that. Notice I didn't even get to fix that, but no big deal. This is a first cut, so no big deal. All right. Let's let's move on. The exhaust was the exact same exhaust valve used last time. The only thing I did on the exhaust is I did the valve job, which is a touch better than it was, and I radiused out the throat. The rest of the port has not been touched. It's still got the old dirt and stuff on it. Okay? And I wanted to see if that radius throat does, uh, does any difference on this exhaust port, whether it boosts up our efficiency or not. Okay, looking down, right down its throat, you can see we did, uh, we did a good job with the liquid flow. I took out our bolt boss a little bit. I did not push my luck. I did have to work on the roof. Notice it's still that super aggressive burr on the roof and the walls and uh, most of the floor the pinch did get some work and I can't use come on I can't use that super aggressive on the pinch because as it gets thin it'll hammer its way through you can see it's got a rough but lighter a lighter touch than the floor and, and, the, and the roof all right, as far as our flows, these were our first cut. Okay, we did pretty good. I remember I said I, I expected to lose some at 300. I actually gained at 300, which was a little bit of a surprise to me because I, I did do some work to the short side radius. I didn't, I didn't do anything radical, just took a little bit off uh, to give it a little bit better shape. And it liked it in the mid-range. But it didn't like it as much right 
right here, it didn't like it as much. Because 500, the way it was, was 280. 500 here is 277.2. Not a huge change, but still a little bit of step back. We got nice boost in this area right here. And we did top out better. We were only 260, 265 at 7 and 283 and change at 7. That's, that's a sizable jump. Of course, this is, I have 0.567 because that's the size of the cam in the Chevelle. So that's 281.7 CFM, which is not terrible. I think that would make a nice a nice street, uh, street ride with the right intake. And what do we got here? We got plus, plus, plus on the swirl, two drops, plus, plus, two drops. It's, it's very interesting to see what happens with the flow, right? 230. Yeah, let's do that again. 230.7, 234, right? It goes up a little bit. Somebody made a, a comment that, uh, you know, the faster the air is going through the port, the, the more swirl you're going to get. I really don't like blanket statements like that, but it does tend to work that way a lot. All right? Let's take a quick look at our exhaust. Remember, the exhaust had very little work. Seat, reducing the, the width in the seat will make a nice difference, right? And that radius. So we got plus, plus. We had a little bit of noise, but we still were a plus. Plus, plus equals minus, minus, minus equals minus. It didn't quite top out as good. Now, let's take a quick look at the exhaust speeds and maybe we'll figure that out. All right. Those exhaust speeds are pretty darn good. Now, what changed? You know what? Let me do plus and minuses on that. Okay. So we got an increase on this side of the port, the exhaust port. We got two minuses and one plus in the center. We got two pluses and a minus. And this was taken at 0.567. This one, I actually took it at 0.55. I should, I should have done that different. This was done at a half. This one was done at 0.567. It's always best to take them at the same lift, but I guess I really wasn't thinking about what cam was in that. In any case, we can still compare them. As far as our pinch, our pinch did get opened up a little bit, and our speed still went up in the top and the middle. Went down, went down at the floor. That's why DV likes to open up the top and leave the floor narrower. Which is a real pain because you, uh, to get that angle just right on every single one is really a chore. Okay, how do we do on the roof? I, I, according to the air speeds, I gave it more area in one spot. Uh, notice what happened to the air speeds, right? Went up considerably, center of the cylinder. Went down the outside of the cylinder. So, not, not a complete win, right? In fact, they're almost 40 apart. That's way worse than what it was. Now, the valve job might be part of that as well. Okay? I should include, I haven't touched the chamber. I haven't touched the chamber, but the short side radius got some work. I have to show you the short side radius, too. And as far as our... Short side radius speeds equals went up very fast in the center and it lost a little bit on the cylinder wall side. Okay, working with my lighting, see if I can do a better job here. I got reflections everywhere, but you can see uh, it was changed, it's, uh, it's laid back the tiniest amount. And the curve over the top has been changed and textured different. One side was brought out a tad wider. That's about it on that. The, the short side could use much more work, but I wanted to see what happened to the, our mid-range flows. So I'm going to take that as a win. Finished talking about the exhaust. The exhaust was good when I started. Okay. 
It was almost 200, and it's a small port. It's not a gigantic port, the bow tie. In fact, the bow tie port, the outlet of it is a little bit smaller than a 305 outlet going from the flange where you bolt it up to. So I always thought it was interesting that they used that, that bolt pattern for the bow tie. Right? Let me measure a, a smaller head, and I'll show you. Okay, that's the height difference from the bow tie head to a 305 head. Now the 305 head has has had some work to it. It's th not stock. I don't have I don't have stock castings laying around usually. Let's go, let's do the width. Okay, that's the width on the 305. Almost almost identical. So the outlet on this bow tie that's been ported by me at least twice okay is still smaller than a 305 exit flows a little better than a 305 in fact it flows darn good for what it is okay if you take a look what happens right at 600 we're almost 200 at 0 0.567, where 197 and change, it actually goes down a touch, which means it's having a little short side radius issue at that point. Engine 5 8 pipe was 205.5. 0 0.567 with the pipe was 203. Engine 7 8 pipe at 600. I do here. I think I put them in the wrong. I put them in the wrong. I wrote them in the wrong spot. They should be. They should be up more. They're in between these two. Okay. So this is five hundred. This is six hundred. This is five sixty-seven. Okay. So that's why it's smaller. It should be above it. Two twenty-seven point four. Two twenty-five point one. Okay. And if you start raising the lift even more with a big pipe, you're almost two forty. That's that's absolutely that's absolutely cranking. Let's see if we can get. Let me just show a little. Light. Okay, you can see my '90s porting. There are still some lumps and bumps and stuff in there, even though it was gone over with a cartridge roll. Uh, yeah, learning curve. Porting is uh, going to be lumpy and bumpy sometimes. You can only do what you can do. Uh, obviously, I'm better now. What I'm thinking of doing on the exhaust is I have a set of these. These may even be the valves that came out of the old work truck or the uh, original Chevelle valves. Because I remember I back cut them 100 years ago. What I might do with these is recut the seat. Recut the back cut, and then use a stone and machine this away. Make it more like a tulip, and reflow it. See if it'll see if this port likes a more of a tulip shape. That would be an interesting experiment. Give me your input on that, guys. What else can I ask you about the, these? You know, for a first cut, I think I got some decent gains. Uh, is it perfect in every way, like wifey? No. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.